you guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you had an amazing holiday. I'm so excited to share this tutorial with you. It is the cutest thing I think I've made in a while. But I do recommend that you make a template. Unless you are really, really, really good at um, being able to find the height and volume and the base of a cone, I would recommend that you figure all that out before you cut your fabric. <laughs> um, I, on the other hand, am not the greatest at doing all of those mathematically, but I am able to figure it out. And so what I did in the video, and I will show you, is I created a template, um, a cone template. I also use this pie pan as the circle for my cuddle cups. And the reason is because it's a great size and it fits for my ferrets or guinea pigs. It's really great for basically small pets. What I wanted was I wanted the base of my cone to be the, it needed to be the same size as this, this. So I did put my measurements in the description and if you follow what I did in the video, um, you should come pretty close to this working perfectly. But if you want it to be bigger or smaller, you're gonna have to adjust this. And even when you're making your template, I still recommend that you test this out. So at the end of this, what you want is you want the base of your cone to be the same size as the bottom of your hammock. So you need to make sure that when you cut your fabric using your template, it's going to be the same size as the base of your um, hammock. If not, when you go to put it together, it's not gonna go together right. What I had to do when I, I first made my template is it ended up being a little bit too small to go around this the way that it needed to. So I added on a piece and I show all of this in the video, but I just wanted to talk about this because it just may take some time and you may wanna um, cut it out slowly and then make sure that it works before you cut your fabric out. It's actually not as difficult as it seems. It can be a little more intimidating than it actually is. Um, I think when you start looking at how to find all of the measurements of a triangle and you're Googling that, your brain starts to, to fry out. I know, I know, mind us. Um, we figured it out. We got it together. Just be patient. You can totally do it. I did do step-by-steps in the tutorial. So um, if you have any questions or you get stuck, you can ask me if I can help you. I certainly will. Okay, so what I've done to create the cone is I've taken two pieces of cardboard paper. I'm gonna put them together because I know I'm gonna need it to be wider than the paper I have. So I'm just creating a big square. Now you should have just a square or you can use any kind of paper. I'm just using this because this is what I had. So to get the um, cone shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a roller and I'm going to start in a corner. For me, this yellow part is an extra half inch, so we don't want to count that. So we're going to put that at the bottom where the half inch is not on the paper. And then I'm going to line it up to the 18. I think we're going to go 18 inches to do this. So you don't want this to move. You're gonna, you just wanna keep this in place no matter what you do. So I've got my ruler in place, I'm not moving the end at all. Now I'm gonna come over just a hair and we're just gonna put another mark and we are going to move over a spot. We're gonna do another mark, move over just a little bit, do another mark. And you're gonna do this till you reach all the way to, all the way around. So you're gonna be creating like an arch. Okay, so now that you've drawn your dots, which I don't, you guys probably can't see very well, I'm going to just make a line from dot to dot so I can see this better. Alright, so now we have cone looking shape. Okay, so I actually made this a little bigger. I'm going to put all the measurements in the description like usual just because I change things around sometimes when I've never done something before. That's why I put everything in the description. Okay, we're going to cut this out now. All right, so now you should have a cone shaped like this. Okay, so I wanna show you guys kinda of what I did. I use this cake top that I've had forever. I got it from the dollar store, so I use it at, to trace the bottom of my cuddle cups. And I absolutely love it because it's the perfect size. So my whole goal here is to make sure that the bottom of my bed is the same diameter as this. And it's not, <laughs> so I don't really like that. Um, I want this to be a little bit wider. So what I did, was I went and I took the other corner and I just cut out another piece of triangle the same length as this and I'm gonna tape it on. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me um, a larger, a wider bottom, but the same height. So 
if you guys want it to be bigger at the bottom, you may have to do something similar. So I'm just going to line these up and attach it so that um, I can make my base a little bit bigger. Alrighty, let's get our fabric in and move this show right along. Okay, so I'm going to use cotton, but you could absolutely use fleece for both sides. It'll just be thicker. Um, I'm going to use cotton because I feel like it'll hold its shape better, but that's after I put the fusible um, fleece on. So I'm going to get a piece of fleece that's going to be for the inside because I want the inside where they lay to be soft. I'm going to put these right sides facing together and then I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so now you want to trace your bottom piece. Okay. Okay, so now um, I'm going to be using fusible fleece. This is... Um, it's fusible on one side. This can be about a half inch smaller than your actual um, shape. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to iron the fusible fleece onto the back of each of my pieces. So um, to do that, you're basically gonna want something to put down or an ironing board. You wanna put something over top of your fabric and you wanna hold it down and not slide your iron. You wanna hold it down on your fleece for about five to seven seconds and then check it. If you do it too long, you may burn your fleece. Um, for the cotton, it's not that big of a deal. You can hold it down for about 12 seconds. It should be stuck and that should be good to go. I do use a little bit of steam or I spray it with a water bottle. Um, and that's how we do it. I do this in a lot of my videos, so I'm not gonna do the whole process here. I just got this offline. It's a free template. Um, it's eight by five. You can use whatever shape you'd like. Just remember, you're gonna have to stitch around it, so don't make it anything too complicated. And um, I'm just gonna cut this out real quick. Okay, so I found my center, and I did that by going point to point, and then from the top. So basically, from point to point is 22 inches um, long. This is 22 inches of a curve, and these are 21 and a half inches on both sides. So in the center, I'm going to do that. I'm going to measure about three inches from the bottom. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not putting it up too high. You want your ferrets or your pet to be able to walk inside of this without any issues. All right, what we're going to do now, you've traced your, your oval. You have this line in the center. I'm going to cut up the line and I'm going to cut around my oval. There'll be a space with an oval in the center. you should now have something that looks like this. Okay, so what you wanna do now is you wanna to go to your sewing machine and you wanna sew all the way around, but you want to leave about a two and a half inch opening um, or a three inch opening, something like that. Basically, we're gonna flip this right side out once we're done. So I'm just gonna put a pin here. This is how I mark my openings. And I'm going to sew from this pin all the way around to here. And then I'm going to stop. And I would back stitch at each opening. And I'm going to do a quarter inch seam. Okay, so now that you have stitched this, this should be completely closed all the way around, except for your opening. I don't even think snipping the corners really matters, but we'll do it anyway. All right, find your opening and flip this so that the right side is facing out. Okay, so now that you've flipped it um, right side out and it looks all one shape, you got all your corners pointed out, you need to close that seam. So you're just gonna let that roll in. You want it to match the rest of your seams. So it looks something like this. It's just clip it or pin it. Okay, so now that you've clipped your opening closed, you're gonna wanna take your um, cone and you're gonna fold it in half. You want the right side of your fabric, so the fabric that you're gonna see when this is all done, the outside of your of your um, cone hammock, and you wanna place it right those sides together. So you wanna be looking at the inside of your cone. And you wanna put them right sides together so that they're all lined up like this. You're gonna take this long side right here and you are going to um, stitch about I don't know, an inch and a half from the top all the way to the bottom. So you're not gonna stitch up here. Okay, so now that you've stitched that, you should have something that looks like this. And there should still be a hole at the top of your cone right here. So just set this aside for a second. Grab your bottom, put the right, so put these right sides together. Um, you don't have to clip them, clip them if you want to. We're basically gonna sew all the way around and we're gonna leave an opening um, about, I don't know, we'll say three inches. 
and I'm gonna stitch from one pin all the way around to the other and I'm gonna stop. Okay, so now that you've stitched this, you want to flip this right side out, or right, yeah, right side's facing out. So if something looks like this, you're gonna wanna do the same thing you did over here, but you wanna try to keep your circle shape. So just tuck this in and just try to keep it um, a circle because you don't wanna make this kind of flat, which is really easy to do when you start to flip these. Okay, so now that I've clipped that opening shot, I'm gonna top stitch all the way around, um, just real close to the edge. So you don't have to make it super pretty. We're just basically focusing on um, closing this opening. You could do a quarter inch top stitch. Okay, so now you've stitched this pad. You put your top stitch in. You just wanna make sure that it's closed, that there's no openings. And so if that looks good, just sit that aside. Grab your cone shape. Now you have this opening. Um, what you wanna do is I wanna take, and I wanna leave it just like it is. So I want the inside fabric looking at me and the fabric that is gonna be showing to the outside once this is done. I want that facing right sides together. You're gonna take your um, pieces, you're gonna clip them, or you don't even really have to clip them at this point. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and you're going to stitch this, this opening closed. I'm just gonna do probably a quarter inch seam, just a little seam. I basically just wanna close this off. So now that you've done that, you should actually just have a cone shape now. And it should look like something like this. So what you wanna do is you want to take your pad and you want to have the outside fabric looking at you and you want this cone to look like this. You wanna match the right sides together. So you want the right sides of the outside fabric to the right sides of the outside fabric. And you're just going to match up the edges and clip it or pin it in place. And you're just gonna go all the way around. And if you measured this out correctly, then um, they, it should fit on here pretty much perfectly. All right, so when you are done, you show something that looks like this. This is your bottom, this is your cone. And you're gonna go over to your sewing machine and you're gonna stitch the bottom to the cone. So now that you've stitched, the bottom there should be no openings at the bottom the only opening should be here and then also at the top which is where we're going to put our strapping to hang it so what i've done is um i'm going to be using this kind of hook it's a swivel hook you can get them off amazon i'll put a link in the description you can also i got a whole big pack on ebay um or you can use shower hooks so it's completely up to you you can also use carabiners those little tiny carabiners Anyway, I cut a piece of strapping nine inches. So I'm gonna put my hook on. I'm gonna fold it in half like this, and I'm going to stick it in the hole that I left. And if you have a hard time getting it through, um, which you shouldn't, but if you do, just reach your hand in and grab it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll leave a little bit of it hanging out. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And then I am going to take um, just a clip to clip it in place real quickly. I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch about an inch down from the top. So I wanna make sure that I close this opening and that I catch the strapping. And I would go over this like two times at least, just to make sure that this never goes anywhere. Okay, so once you've sewn your hook on, um, you should, it should just be, everything should be closed except for the opening in the front. I'm actually gonna snip this off because it'll make it a little hard to flip it the way that I want. Um, so now that you've done that, you want to take your hand and flip your entire cone right side facing out. Push up the top where your hook is and then push your bottom out so that it's nice and round. All right, and let me get you guys in a position so you can see the whole thing finished. So this is what it will look like when it's done. It's super adorable. And we are going to hang it up in the ferret's cage. It's so cute. Also, um, I made end up making a little pad for this. So it's just a little pad that fits on the bottom. It just helps it hold its shape. It's also just an extra softness. And it fits in there really well. And it just keeps the shape a little bit better. 